In its 2013 first quarter analysis of the global economy, the UK-based Economist magazine opined that despite the precarious state of some economies like the American, European and Japanese, Nigeria is demographically positioned as a potential political economy. For Nigeria, a couple of things that we like. One, of course, is that Nigeria is at a demographic sweet spot. Your growth story is pretty good. We expect about 6 or 7 percent over the next few years. In my view, I look at the world, you could be growing much faster. This means with a massive population of 160 million and over 50 percent as youth in the country, there is great possibility for economic transformation if the potentials are harnessed effectively. So what is the challenge with the youth today? developing a culture of entrepreneurship which will empower them to become the drivers of the economy because it is small, medium enterprises and the startup businesses that facilitate its growth. The Nigerian youth constitute over 50% of the population and the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics from 2012 analysis shows that 68 million of this population are unemployed. This has contributed to the restiveness increased crime rates, and rising level of violence in the country, which unemployed youths have wrongfully channeled their energies to. Government has in its estimation and approach to the issue of tackling unemployment, set up initiatives like the UWIN Business Solution Development Plan for emerging entrepreneurs, but it has not actually achieved the Unemployment Reduction Index. Experts and professionals have been sharing their views on the challenge and all seem to come to a focal point for the youth to become diligent, identify their potentials and skills they need, and also be strategic in the development of their business ideas. It's a brilliant thing for young people to have ideas. It's, it, it's, it, it's what we want. We encourage young people to be a lot more entrepreneurial in their attitude. We encourage them to be a lot more open-minded. In fact, we encourage them to sort of not depend too much on government directly. Yes, we all continue to say that government has the responsibility for creating an environment that makes it possible for me to do the things that I need to do based on the, the, uh, the responsibilities of government. As a young person, you've got to bear in mind that uh, an idea itself must be viable. It's not a case of, oh, I've got an idea and government is standing in my way. How viable is your idea? Uh, the normal rules of business must always apply. You've got to evaluate, do I have a market, do I have a, um, the, uh, the, the product, do I have the skill, do I have the capability, is the whole environment supportive of what it is that I want to do. And if you don't do your analysis well, you will step out and you begin to blame people for things that actually happen to be your own fault. This is probably one of the surest way by which we can lift the power from the bottom of the pyramid to become part of the networked economy. Why? Because you find that our teaming population, if we can teach them skills and we can attract capital to support them, then that becomes a big pile of, of uh, human capital some of which will become successful entrepreneurs. So I'm very hopeful about the opportunities for entrepreneurship because you see, every challenge holds an opportunity. The challenges we face in Nigeria gives big opportunities for thriving businesses, uh, businesses uh, ideas to solve some problems. What do you want the private or public uh, sector or bank to support? Perhaps you have an idea and this idea have you done any customer discovery around the idea? Customer discovery means customer uh, hypothesis and customer verification to say, um, I am going to produce this product or this service. I have talked to people outside of my immediate family and friends that will buy out of sympathy. People that don't know me, I've gone and spoken with them and they have told me that they like this product or this service will solve the need and they are ready to pay X amount of money and it will cost me X minus Y to produce it. And if I sell it to the catchment area that I have gotten, uh, then I'm going to make a profit of maybe Z and over three years, five years, I'll break even and pay you back your money. These 
are the basics that someone that wants to put money into an entrepreneur business wants to see. But when you say, okay, I have a business plan, here it is, Nigeria has 167 million people, even if only 10% of people buy that 16 million people, so we're going to make money, it, it doesn't bring the detail of, of uh, how the person is going to make his money back or how he's going to get his time value of money if he puts time into it. And this is why I feel that the potential entrepreneur does have a lot to do to uh, convince himself to the extent that he can convince other people about the viability of his project. People ask me, are you born an entrepreneur or do you learn it? And my answer is that it's a wrong question to ask. Like Steve Blank says, the right question is, who volunteers to be an entrepreneur? Who volunteers to be something that takes a lot of effort, something that you need to go the extra mile, something that is very difficult to do, and something that at many turns it looks as if you are going to fail. And as an entrepreneur, you have to look at a long, uh, a long tenor to assess success. It's not a quarter by quarter uh, valuation to say I, I failed or I succeeded. Because failure in an entrepreneurial enterprise is experience. And you, you learn from it and say, okay, I'm going to better it that way. If you don't have that stuff, if you are not that tough, then you don't have the ingredients really to be an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur doesn't give up where others do. So at the end of the day, I think that people will begin to understand what it takes to be an entrepreneur and a successful entrepreneur, then they can make the decision, uh, a, a informed decision of, am I cut out for this or maybe I should just get a job? And those that are cut out for it, there is all the support for them. I don't want us to confuse SME, which means small and medium enterprise, with a startup. A startup is something that is not existing and you are going to set it up. An SME is a small company that the hypothesis has been tested but probably needs more investment to create scale and expand. That there is the SME fund and that you have the venture capitalists and so on. What people are, are crying about is money for the startup and I don't believe that you find so many people that will put institutional money into startup. They want you to talk to friends, break your savings, talk to attract friend, uh, uh, relatives, to put the initial money together to prove the concept of the startup. Only when it is proved and it is being shown that it works, will they put in money. So let's not confuse startup with small and medium enterprises. A startup is a risky venture and typically you just have to look at angel finance to prosecute it. When you have grown for a startup and the project is existing and it is successful but it needs money to scale, then you become an SME. In that case, then you can assess the SME funds from the banks. Jabima was started in uh, August of 2009 and I think for us at that time it was uh, we saw a very clear opportunity in terms of uh, indexing all the jobs in the country whether they were online or offline and we also discovered that uh, jobs were also one of the critical things and most important things that uh, Nigerians, especially young Nigerians, were looking for on the internet. Uh, so we felt we could, uh, it was obviously a big opportunity uh, it was something we could uh, get into and make a difference out of. And over the last uh, three years or so, we've been we've been doing nothing but trying to uh, fulfill our mandate of indexing all the jobs in Nigeria, whether online or offline. In terms of tracking the number of people that uh, have gotten a job on our site, uh, we only actively started uh, tracking that last year. And just last year alone, we we filled over 10,000 uh, vacancies, so at least 10,000 people got uh, their jobs on our platform. And so far this year, we've, we've, we've done uh, over 10,000 uh, over 10,000 uh, positions that have been filled by our, our platform. Every single day, about about 50,000 people uh, interact with the website, and uh, at any point in time, we have about 10,000 vacancies that open across all the sectors, uh, all the industries and from zero to about 20 years uh, work experience.
I think the issue of uh, skill gap is a big problem, it's a global problem. Uh, but in Nigeria, uh, we have a bigger problem in our hands, uh, and that's the issue of uh, we producing graduates that don't have any clear understanding of what's happening in the in the workplace. So let me pick on a specific skill set, and uh, that is communication skills. You discover that uh, when you compare an average 18 year old uh, uh, graduate or undergraduate in Nigeria with a counterpart in Ghana and you compare the level of, and command of the English language you discover that the Ghanaians are doing much better in terms of communication skills and when you talk about communication skills communication is very uh, critical not only in education but especially in business and life and it's one of the critical uh, market-oriented skills that you need to be able to survive. Whether your boss is saying you should write a memo or you should need to write a business plan if you're an aspiring entrepreneur or even if you're looking for a job for the very first time you need to write a CV. You should be able to articulate some of the things that you've done in the past, your achievements, your track records, what makes you different from the next person. So I think from a communication angle I, I feel that it's, it's a big thing that uh, we need to do, we need to fix um, English, it might look very subtle, but it's something that needs to be addressed. Even if it's just uh, maybe saying part of the whole NYC uh, process, let's set out a month for intensive uh, classes around English language for people to do listening comprehension, writing essays, and yeah, also giving them uh, real time feedback about okay how to go about these things because what, what I've seen over time especially when you interact with a lot of job seekers is uh, the confidence is not there and major reason why the confidence is not there is people cannot express themselves. I think uh, it's also the responsibility of CEOs to as much as possible dedicate, uh, allocate a percentage of their budgets to training develop, and skills uh, development, professional development. I think it's really critical because to attract and retain the very best of people, you need to keep retraining them to make sure that you have some of the best uh, managers in the industry, wherever industry uh, you play or whatever sector you are in. I think that's, that's very critical.